So I currently own over half a million sports cards in my collection. And whenever I tell someone that, they always ask me, how do you keep track of them? How do you know where each card is? Well, let me show you guys. Let me show you how I collect and sort all of my sports cards. So here we are at the collection setup. This is in my basement where I keep basically most of my sports cards, where I keep the bulk of them all. And I'm gonna show you guys each little section, how I sort all my sports cards. How do I organize them? How do I keep track of them all? What do I do with the more valuable ones? And so I'm gonna go into detail of how I do that. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to join. We do tons of sports cards videos. So I'd be happy if you could join me for them. So here we go. I'm gonna start off with the question I always get, how do you sort your common cards? What do you do with all of those bulk common cards? Well, here we go. You're looking at what I do with all my common cards. Between these two shelves here are all the common cards, basically. You can see on this wall here, they're organized by set. They're actually in order. So if you look all the way back down here, they are in order by year. Now, please excuse the bad handwriting of some of the labels and the handwriting on it's kind of sloppy. You can see some complete sets of the junk wax area and we can move all the way up here. All the cards in those boxes are sorted in chronological order, so they are in card order. So it's really easy to sort them and look through them and find the card that I'm looking for. So let's just do an example here. We have a box of 2008 tops here. This looks like it's just the base set of 08 tops. You can see on it, you can see which cards I am missing from that set. You can see how many cards are in the set. And then I have right here, it says NIB. It says not in box. So those are the cards that are more valuable that I decided to put into a top loader and set aside. And I'm gonna to get to the cards that are in top loaders in just a bit. So let's pull this box out. Another cool feature I added to this wall before I get to that box is if I pull a box out like right here, the box on top of it won't fall down because I added a cardboard divider on top there. So uh, that little aspect of, of this wall here has really helped me pull out some boxes. So here we go with the 2008 Tops box. We open it up. You can see there's an 08 top sticker there, but here are all the cards from the set and they're all in order. And some of the more valuable players and cards are sleeved up like a Manny Ramirez card. Not super valuable, but I just put sleeves in the more valuable cards. There's an Ivan Rodriguez, Justin Verlander. So that's kind of how I organize each of these boxes here. Basically, if I have a ton of common cards that can really build, are pretty close to building the whole set. I'll put it in a box like that so that it doesn't get its own little section. So it's a lot easier to organize. But let's say I have a bunch of commons that don't really have enough to fill up a box of any size. What I'll do is I'll sort them into these common 5,000 count boxes. And I don't just have one or two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or 10 or 11. I have 11 of these things. And actually over here, I have three more of those 5,000 count boxes that are in need of sorting. So I actually need to sort them pretty soon here, but you can see this wall, they are all common boxes. I'm gonna take out a box and show you guys what these boxes look like. So here we go, I took out one of the 5,000 count boxes and you can see each set is very meticulously organized and labeled. So here's what the labels look like. It has the year, the brand, and then the set. And each card within that little label there is also chronologically ordered. And of course, cards that are more valuable, they or somewhat my valuable name will get a sleeve. So some of these cards here, like uh, John Smoltz or Tom Glavin, that'll have a sleeve on it. So all of these cards from common, so from the first 5,000 count box up there all the way to the 11th 5,000 count box at the bottom, they are all in chronological order by year, by set, by brand, by brand, and by card number. So all the cards are in order in that respect. Yes, it does take a long time. I get that a lot. Like, geez, how long does that take you? It does take a while. It's taken me a long, long time to put all these cards in the correct order, to give them the correct labels, to do it somewhat neat. I don't have great handwriting, so I try my best to put it in um, decent handwriting. So after the end of each year, after sorting, I have some of the cards that don't really belong in a set. There's just not a lot of them that really fit into a set. So I just put them into one little bulk area right behind, right in front of this one divider that has the general year on it. So for example, this card here, this is a home team advantage, a parallel of Alfonso Soriano from 2003 Tops. This is the only card in my collection of a home team advantage card. So I don't really put it in with any other card. So it just kind of like falls into, I guess, the outcasts of that year. So that kind of does it for the commons or what I do with most of the commons. I also have a couple binders up here and these binders, I'm actually taking the cards out of the binders currently. So 
these binders are no more, but they also contain some sets and uh, cards in these sets will actually be put into boxes on this side here. So those binders will be no more. And this section here, I have this box. There's no cards in it. It says needs typed and or sorted. Basically what I do with all my cards, and I'll get to this in just a second. All the cards that I have in my collection that are somewhat valuable, I put them into top loaders or one touches and I actually type them into an Excel spreadsheet just so that I can keep track of them in some sort. So any card that I need to be uh, typed or sorted up, I'll put them into this box. And then I also have a couple more boxes down here. This is the need sorted box. These are common cards that need to be sorted into these 5,000 count boxes. Instead of just sorting them one by one, I'll just accumulate all the cards in these boxes here over time and then I'll eventually transfer them over, organized and sorted into these 5,000 count boxes over here. So just kind of common cards that aren't, you know, super valuable, that don't deserve a top loader, uh, that will eventually be transferred either into these 5,000 or into these sets over here. And then down here, just a couple common PC items that I need to be sorted. Eventually, these are some Cleveland sports. So I'm a big Cleveland sports fan. So this is just Browns, Indians, Guardians stuff that need to be sorted into some of my PC items. So we'll get to those in just a bit. So that's kind of what I do with my common cards. I also have a couple various sets up here. These are smaller sets, so nothing crazy. So a set like this, this is a near complete set of 1999 Topps Traded. You can see the label on there, the cards I've taken out and the cards that I'm missing. So they're not really big enough to fit into a box. They just kind of fit into a smaller box and they're placed in these boxes up here. They're full of just tiny, tiny sets that uh, kind of would take up space if they had their own box in the bottom here. Next, I'm gonna take a look at the supplies that are in my collection. So on the top here, we just have a bunch of boxes. So if we move these out of the way, you can see a bunch of tinier boxes unmade boxes 500 count boxes 600 all the various types of boxes that'll be used to be filled up with sets smaller sets or to be used for shipping later on you can see right here here are all the like single card supplies so we have basic top loaders here and then we have on this side gold foil rookie top loaders we have 55 points 75 point in the back here we have 130 point and then the further back we have 180 point and bigger top loaders there we have some one touches you can see a big mountain of one touches here i've actually just taken a bunch of cards out of these one touches so there's just a big uh messy mound right now that's okay that, that box kind of extends to the back here as well this box here we have dividers so these are hard plastic dividers other paper dividers and whatnot that i used to help organize some of the 5,000 count boxes we have some tobacco sized top loaders these are pretty unique pretty neat um, i don't really use them too often but and the chance that you do need them, they do come in handy. Here's a couple supplies that help me determine the, the card gauge thickness. So just hold the card up to there and it'll tell me how thick it is. I have a centering tool here. So this tool will actually tell me if I'm like looking at a card's quality. I'll use this to help me determine if the card is centered pretty well. And in this box here, I have a bunch of penny sleeves. I also have a couple card saver ones, a couple bags, theme bags and whatnot, graded card sleeve bags. And a couple other bags are in here as well. So those are the supplies that I use for single cards and then bulk cards like that. These are all my super valuable cards. I'm gonna to get to those last actually, so we're gonna skip that. We're gonna head down here to the sealed wax section. So I do keep some sealed wax for myself. I typically don't keep them for too long. I usually don't save sealed wax. I tend to open them up on camera for the channel, but there's a couple boxes here that I am saving. This uh, Bowman Mega Box, I'm saving those for myself. And I have a couple packs of Bowman in the back here as well that I will be saving for myself. I probably won't be opening, but all these sealed wax, I just like to accumulate and then eventually open up for a video. So this, this shelf just is for all the cool sealed wax that I'll eventually open up. This is very aesthetically pleasing. I do enjoy looking at this. It's quite fun to see an unopened box of cards because you just, you never know if there's something huge in it, which is quite exciting. I also have a bunch of loose packs over here that are all junk wax era stuff uh, i just these honestly have been sitting there for a while so maybe i should give them away or do something with them and then on the very bottom here i have a bunch of stuff in these boxes that are going to be sold so in in some capacity all these cards in here will be sold i actually have one of my shipping forms in here that i usually include with larger collections that kind of points to my channel that some of the cards were probably featured on my channel so in this box here, these all these cards in here are cards that I'm going to be sending off to ComC. I like to send cards to my ComC account to, to sell. So these are just some cool random cards that eventually I'll send to ComC in some capacity for them to be sold. They're usually just one to one to fifty dollar cards that uh, I don't really feel like putting on eBay. Just a bunch of items that need to be sold in some capacity are all in these boxes here. Uh, a couple complete sets of football. I don't collect football or basketball or hockey anymore. I used to, so I have a bunch of them saved up. I'm not going to move this top box here because it's kind of heavy. You can see in the bottom there, there's just rows and rows and rows of basketball and football cards. 
there are no valuable basketball or football cards in the bottom there they're all kind of done for so <laughs> i already picked it clean these are all common cards that i'm just going to lot up and sell for very cheap on the bottom here are just a couple complete sets a couple vintage cards that i'm going to be selling so anything that needs to be listed on ebay or comp c or sell through Twitter or Instagram. They will be put into these boxes down here and just dealt with eventually. Also wanna give a shout out to the cool wall decorations I made for myself. Put a bunch of common Cleveland Indians cars up top there, I thought it was pretty cool. I put a bunch of the cooler packs that I've opened up back in my day into this uh, sealed case, I don't know, card display item for the wall. There's some cool stuff on there and then this cool mascot poster. There's a couple other things I wanna put on the wall, but not yet. We might be doing some moving pretty soon, so I don't wanna decorated too much up top here we just have a couple of video supplies i normally have a couple tripods up there but i'm actually using one right now a couple of lights and here's a, a trading mat that i use uh, here's the light strip that i'll use for some of the videos and of course over here in the desk to my left we have a couple other items used for filming so microphone webcam a couple other tripods microphone stand just some various items to help with filming also on this desk is like one of the main sorting stations. So this is usually if I have a bunch of cards to sort, this is where I will sort them up. Over here on this table, this is actually where I film all of my videos. So I'll put my cameras or my lights on this side, put the camera and the microphone in the middle and all the card openings, all the magic happens right here. So it's a pretty special area, lots of magic built in there. And then this is all where the hard work goes, all the sorting, all the shipping preparation for cards I sell go into this area here. Over on these cubbies, I have a bunch of shipping supplies, various items for filming. And here is just a cool, cool, cool like a little collectibles cabinet. I don't really know what to do with it. I have a bunch, bunch of random collectibles that I've saved over the years. And so I just kind of stuff them in here and I'll deal with them later, to be honest. And up top here, uh, it's kind of messy right now, but you can see a bunch of the uh, open boxes, open wax boxes that I've saved. A couple random baseball cards. Don't mind the Maker's Mark barrel there. I do enjoy bourbon, so that's just sitting there as well. I'm a big golfer, so we got some cool golf balls that I've saved over the years. So some random stuff up top there that are pretty collectible to me. But this is the main sorting station here. We also have in this drawer here a bunch of unused binders that I'll eventually use. And then on this side, we have more sorting supplies, more shipping supplies, and in here, are a bunch of damaged or, or used top loaders and one touches. So I actually use these, like they're all scratched up and beat up. So I use these to ship my cards because I don't want to, I want to save some of the, the newer top loaders for myself, not to sound greedy, but there's always a way that you can use used and damaged top loaders and use them for shipping purposes. So that's exactly what I do. So now, like I said, we're going to go back to the more valuable stuff. And this section here is all of my valuable cards, as well as my personal collection, which I consider the most valuable of my collection so i'm gonna look at each box here and show you what i am working with so the first box on that shelf is the box that says mag cases i built this box myself out of just a bunch of cardboard and duct tape and in here yes are the most valuable cards in my collection so cards that i have personally valued at about 20 dollars or more will put it be put into a one touch you can see some of the bigger cards here that get put into one touch is a couple hank aaron cards and so any card that's just really cool to me will get a one touch uh, this card here didn't quite wasn't it was an awkward size so i didn't put it into a one touch it's a cool ryan sandberg rookie here's a kirby puckett blank back card that's pretty cool uh, this is not a card showcase i gotta avoid be it being a card showcase but any sort of valuable card that's about 20 dollars or more we'll get put into a one touch and then put into this card case here which is pretty exciting so you could say this is the more valuable stuff in my collection yeah there's some pretty valuable stuff in here it's not really the pelican case it's not like a a sealed lock box it's it's kind of junky but honestly it's got some character to this box there's been some cool cards that have come and gone through this box so i honestly kind of like it i'm gonna keep it and for the shoe box here i have in my personal collection card so any valuable personal collection card i actually have two personal collection boxes i'll show you guys but this is all on this left side is all bob feller cards on this right side is non bob feller pc items so i mainly collect bob feller for my personal collection i also collect Cleveland Indians, like vintage Cleveland Indians players. So here's just a bunch of cool Bob Feller cards that I have in my collections. Some old playing day stuff. And any order, any sort of Bob Feller common card is also in this area. It's like there's a base Gypsy Queen card there. So nothing crazy, probably like a 20 cent card. That's actually a $20 card right there. That's a cool one. So anything cool that's Bob Feller wise. And then also just some random vintage Cleveland stuff that I like to have in my collection. That's sorted over here. That's on the other side of the shoe box. So that's my favorite box in my entire collection. Now I've got this cigar box here, and this is full of more Bob Feller stuff. 
So just cards that are in one touches that are for Bob Feller, I think that are really cool. Relics, autographs, commemorative patches, they're all in this box here. Here's a bunch of autographs of Bob Feller that I have in this box. So anything that's in here, all the graded cards are in this card collector's vault in the back. Let me just take this out for you, open up that. Don't have very many graded cards. I'm kind of trying to beef up that aspect of my collection. But just a couple Bob Feller cards. I graded this one myself. I was pretty excited for that one. That's where I keep all of my valuable personal collection cards are in this old cigar box. It actually still smells like a couple of cigars. It smells really nice, actually. I have another shoe box here. And in this one, I just have a bunch of vintage commons. I'm a big fan of like vintage cards. So a bunch of these vintage commons I'll just have in my collection. They're sorted by year and by card number. All common cards. I just have them sitting in here. I'm going to uh, top load up a bunch of my other vintage commons that I have in my collection. And lastly, certainly not least in my collection, are this box of all of my other valuable cards. They're all sorted by year. And these are cards that I have valued between $1 and $20. So this is the range of cards in that respect. They're all sorted by year, by set, by card number. You can see, for example, some Buster Posey rookies, Madison Bumgarner couple rookies from that era that I think are pretty cool. Anything that I think is valuable from this time frame that deserves a top loader of some sort. There's a Juan Gonzalez reverse negative rookie card. Anything that's really cool. I typically don't keep inserts or parallels in my collection. I like to sell the inserts and parallels. They tend to sell pretty quickly. So I just keep the base, the base cards basically. Any sort of base card is what I'll try to keep in my collection. We'll go through 2016 here. A couple Schwarber rookies, Corey Seager. I also keep cards that I think are going to go up in value. I'll keep them uh, in this area too. You saw a couple inserts there. A couple of these inserts in my collection. Those are probably part of complete sets. So I'll keep like complete sets to myself. But I'll also top load up the more valuable ones. So this is how I do my more valuable cards. Just sort them by year. Put them in top loaders. So this is kind of my collection. This is what I'm working with, the workstations that I use, all the supplies and how I have them organized, all the common cards and how I have them sorted and organized very meticulously and detailed. I also mentioned that I use an Excel spreadsheet. I know I didn't uh, showcase any of the footage from how I use that Excel spreadsheet. That, that spreadsheet's always changing, but the basics of that spreadsheet is I'll include the year of the card, the brand, the set of the card, the player name, and I'll also include any sort of attributes about the card. So I'll include if it's a rookie card, if it's a parallel, if it's serial numbered autograph, has a relic. And then I'll also include like the estimated price of it, the estimated value of it. I'll get that estimated value from sites like uh, ComC, Card Ladder, eBay, any sort of site that'll help me determine what the value of the card is. That's what I'll input into that big Excel spreadsheet that I have there. I also have a separate Excel spreadsheet showcasing my personal collection items. That gets its own spreadsheet because it's really personal to me. And I made a video about this in the past that showcases every single Bob Feller card ever made in the history of man is in that spreadsheet. And so what I do is I look at that spreadsheet I figure out what cards do I need in my collection. And I'll look at that and I'll say, okay, I need this one. So I'll go find it and then I'll just check it off that list. So it's kind of fun. It's a, it's a bit tedious and it's excessive, but it is a cool, it is a cool spreadsheet. So this has been fun. I've always wanted to show like what my collection looks like. People have always asked me like, how, how many cards do you have? And like, how do you sort them? And then what does it look like? So <laughs> here we are. I know it's not super detailed video, but I wanted to show you guys what it actually looked like. So if you have questions, like specific questions, comment them down below. I'm really curious to hear. What kind of questions you have? What did I miss in this video? What are you more curious about? If you're more curious about something specific from this video, let me know and like I'll try and maybe film another video or just provide some details in the in the comments. So that's kind of how I collect. I collect uh, sets. I collect Bob Feller. I collect vintage Indians. And then I collect cool base cards from sets like that. So that's what I do. I also collect the un, uh, the opened wax boxes I have saving over there. Yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Had a lot of fun filming it and showing you guys what I'm working with. If you guys enjoyed it, please like and subscribe for more to come. This has been Eagle Man, and I'll see you guys next time.